Today we're taking a look at this amazing little Quantare 50mm f2.8 macro lens. Hey everyone, Sean here with photodeox.com. Now I recently picked up this Quantare 50mm f2.8 macro lens at a thrift store for only 24 bucks. Now I thought I got a great deal and I did because this is a nice lens, but unfortunately it does have some issues. Apparently some of these lenses were made with faulty communication pins, which means they don't communicate properly with a Canon EF camera. So I put this on a Canon EF camera, I couldn't even take a picture. That being said, this is a wonderful lens. It's got a beautiful optic and it does one-to-one -one macro reproduction, which is great for macro photography. Now, what are Quantare lenses? Well, I looked it up and apparently they were made by Sigma back in the day, specifically for Ritz camera stores. So this was basically a cheaper Sigma sub brand sold at a camera store. But I gotta say, I really like this lens. I think it has great optical quality and it's a wonderful macro lens. Because the communication pins are busted on this lens, I can't really control it with a Canon EF camera. When it's mounted on the camera, it won't even let me take a picture. And when I tried to put this on our Canon EF Fusion adapters to adapt EF lenses to mirrorless cameras, it wouldn't communicate with the lens either. So that's okay because we make manual EF adapters. This is our Canon EF to Sony E-mount adapter, which will let me put this lens on my Sony E-mount camera. I won't have any electronic aperture control, but I will be able to use the lens. Now, the biggest challenge with this setup is I am limited to the widest aperture setting on this EF lens. There's no manual aperture control and Canon EF lenses lock to their widest setting. So I'm gonna have to shoot all my macro photos at f2.8. And on one hand, that's a huge challenge because when you're focusing super close up on a very tiny insect or flower, you have to be very careful. If the insect moves a little, if the wind blows the flower a little, your focus is ruined and you have to take another shot. So basically the way I've been using this lens on my Sony camera is I've been going up to a subject, setting the focus, and then just kind of moving back and forth, taking a couple shots until I nail the focus. So yeah, the downside, you have a very, very shallow depth of field for your macro photography. But there's an upside to this too. You can get some really beautiful, shallow depth of field macro shots. If your subject doesn't move and you hold your camera relatively still, you can also focus stack multiple images. This blue damselfly wasn't moving at all, so I took four photos, each with a slightly different focal plane. Then I used Photoshop scripts to layer them, and then I blended the four images together. And this created a composite image where more of the damselfly is in focus. Okay, that's a quick look at using this busted macro lens on our Sony camera with our manual Canon EF to Sony E adapter. Now, would I recommend this lens? I definitely would. It's got beautiful optics. You can get some really nice macro photography, and I love the one-to-one -one reproduction ratio. If you can get one that works properly, not only will you have the wonderful optics and macro capabilities, you'll also be able to narrow the aperture so more of your subject is in focus. Now, if you'd like to learn more about Photodeox adapters like this Canon EF to Sony E adapter, click the link in the description below. Also, click right here to subscribe to our YouTube channel to get more videos just like this one. I'm Sean with photodeox.com and have fun shooting macro photography.